Welcome back everybody and this is the next section of the Procreate 101 course called Advanced Features. So here is where we're going to dive into more advanced features like layers, masks, clipping masks, guides, adjustments layers, filters, um, even text and blending modes and stuff like that. So I think it's important that you're able to follow along for these sections. So I'm going to go through step by step of how we can implement these features. So first, we're going to talk about layers, masks, and clipping masks. So for this lesson, we're going to come over here and create a new canvas. I'm going to use a canvas sized at 2000 by 2000 pixels at 300 dpi, and I'm not going to change any other settings, and we'll press create. Here we're welcomed with a blank screen. First things first, I want you to come over here to layers, open up the layers panel and see that you have two things already here. One is background color and the other is layers. Background color is a layer that does nothing other than give you a solid color. You can adjust this to whatever you like, but for the sake of this lesson, I'm just going to dim it out a little bit so it's not so pure white and we're gonna leave it fully desaturated and press done. Now we have our background layer and we have layer one. When you press this little plus sign, you're going to get a new layer. Automatically, it's going to number them up numerically, which is nice, but you can tap on that and press rename if you want to rename it something specific. From here, you can delete layers or duplicate them by swiping to the left and pressing duplicate or delete. By pressing lock, you're going to lock that layer so you're unable to do anything on it. It's going to tell you locked layer. Would you? The current selection contains locked items. Would you like to open layers? There you can open layers or press unlock so that you don't mess with that layer. That's good for if you're creating some sort of guides or grids or templates, and you don't want to be accidentally drawing on that layer or moving it around. Other than that, you probably won't use it much. You'll probably use duplicate or delete a lot more often. Now, if you duplicate a layer, it's going to duplicate it with the same name. That's important to know. So if you have a shadow layer that you've named shadow and you duplicate it, it's not going to just turn it to layer five. So that's a helpful. Go ahead and delete all of the extra layers except for one. By pressing on the little thumbnail here of the layer, you're going to get another set of options. Rename, select, copy, fill, clear, alpha lock, mask, invert, and reference. We will jump into some of these in a minute, but first we're going to see select. Now if we press select, nothing's going to happen because we have nothing on the layer. Let's solve this by choosing a brush. I'm going to choose a hard round brush and I'm going to draw a heart. Right? Not the most beautiful looking heart, but nonetheless, it's a heart. So I dragged in the color to fill it in fully. And now we have a heart. Lovely. If we come over to our layers panel, press on the thumbnail and choose select. Now we're going to see these little lines. I'm going to come over here to actions and selection mask visibility. I'm going to crank this up so that it's easier for you to see on camera. Everything that is lines is going to be not selected. The thing that is clear is going to be selected. So it's telling me that we've selected only the brush marks on this layer, which is the heart. From here, we can do anything. We can three fingers down like I showed in the previous lessons and you know duplicate that heart just like so or if we drag that off the screen it's going to just delete it but we still have a new layer we can delete that layer and we can come over here and press select now we have the same selection this selection goes beyond just that layer so we can come over here create a new layer and grab a different color like a light green and paint on that selection. Now it looks like I painted directly on the heart, but really I just painted within the bounds of the heart selection. 
this is on its own complete layer, and we can move this around anywhere. Likewise, if we selected this layer thumbnail and choose select, now we have only those marks selected, and we can choose another color and paint over that. Now, the thing about doing your work this way is that everything's going to be on a separate layer, but you're not going to be able to move this around and retain that kind of overlaid effect. For that, we're going to need to use a different tool. If we delete these two layers and go back to our heart and select this layer, you're going to see alpha lock here. Alpha lock is going to lock the transparent pixels of the layer. So that means even though we have this light green here, we can't draw anything anywhere except for where there's already pixel information. Pretty cool, right? Now, this can go a step further. If we use two fingers and swipe to the right, it will unlock the alpha lock layer. Again, if we do two fingers to the right, it'll redo the alpha lock layer. And you can see this little checkerboard behind here. This is indicating that the layer is alpha locked. If you press on it, you can see there's a little check mark that says alpha lock. Let's turn that off. Let's come over here to Gaussian blur, adjustments, Gaussian blur. We'll get into that more a little bit later. But if we set that Gaussian blur and then choose alpha lock, you can see that this is going to paint still over only the pixels that have information. It was able to even make a smooth line towards the edge of the heart because it remembered which pixels have what level of transparency. So it's not going to paint a hard edge where a hard edge doesn't exist. So essentially with alpha lock selected, we could paint over this whole heart, make it light green, and we haven't managed to damage any of the edges or uh, transparency information of the pixels, all thanks to alpha lock. I'm going to undo all that and get our heart back nice and crispy. The next setting that we're gonna see here is copy, and this is the same as doing select three fingers down and copy, but it's just a little bit faster. So if we just press copy, it's going to copy the contents of the layer. That way, when we do three fingers down paste, it's going to paste a second layer with the same information as the first. So that is the easy stuff that has to do with layers. It's pretty self explanatory. You can adjust the opacity by pressing on this little N. This is gonna open up your blending modes and your opacity. This is how much the layer is visible. So if we had two layers and we turn off the top layer and we come over here and press on this and choose invert, that's gonna change this to a light, light pink. It's pretty hard to see on the camera, so let me go ahead and adjust this. So now we have this like darker gray. If we turn on the top layer and we adjust the opacity, it becomes more and more see-through until it's completely invisible. This is a cool feature that you will probably be using a lot. If we take this and we move it over a little, you can see a little bit better about what's happening. These are all different blending modes, but we're going to dive deep into those in one of the next lessons. So let's go ahead and delete those and we bring our heart back to the center. Now we've gone through rename, select, copy, uh, clear. Clear is going to just erase the layer, obviously. The next thing that we'll see in here is fill layer. Now fill layer is going to fill the entire layer with whatever color you have selected. Now, if we only wanted to fill the area of the heart, what we could do is press on this, choose select then come back to this and choose fill layer. Now that's going to only fill the area we selected. Nice. But let's imagine that, you know, we didn't want to destroy the original contents of this heart. Maybe, maybe there's a face in there. Maybe there's a painting inside the heart. 
and we want to adjust the color, but we don't want to, you know, destroy the pixels that are on that heart. So let's press undo, get back to our heart, and let's choose a lighter color. Let's actually draw a little face on the heart. And we don't want to ruin that face. So this is where masks and clipping masks come in. So if we create a new layer and we get our green color and we just color across this whole layer, you can see that we've just covered up our heart. But if we come over to our layers panel, press on that layer and choose clipping mask, it's going to clip that color only over the layer below it. So you see there's a tiny little down arrow here. This is telling you that the layer is clipped onto it. So you can see that the thumbnail of the layer is also pushed over slightly compared to this one. And that's to tell you that it's kind of latched onto it. So if we were to change this color to like a bluish or a purplish color, and we can turn it off and turn it on and we haven't damaged our original layer. Likewise, if we select this layer with the direct selection tool and we move it, we can actually see the edges of where we were scribbling this color. We can use this to move this around and adjust it however we want onto that heart layer. Now, it doesn't make much sense to do it like this because you're just covering up the layer. Once we experiment with more opacities and blending modes, we can find a fine tune adjustment to, you know, make this heart purple without destroying the face. But let's talk about another useful way we can use clipping masks. Let's create a new layer above our heart and come over here to file, add, and we're going to insert a file. Here, we're going to pick one of my paper textures. I'm gonna choose this one. Here you can see I've imported a paper texture that just covered the whole screen, but I only want the paper texture applied to the layer below it. This is where clipping masks come in again. Choose clipping mask and boom, it's going to clip that paper texture only to the heart. Now, a quick little sneak peek into uh, one of the upcoming lessons. If we just scroll down and choose a different blending mode, you can see that we've retained some of that paper texture without getting rid of our little smiley face. So clipping masks, hard at work for you. You can also use the selection tool with that paper texture and move it around and get a section of it that looks a little bit better for the project. Really cool, really fun way to use clipping masks. Now let's experiment with clipping mask counterpart, which is just a plain old mask. Now to create a mask for a layer, you can't just create a new layer like we did for clipping mask, because if you press mask, it's going to create a mask on that layer instead. So go ahead and delete that. And what you're going to want to do is press on this layer on the thumbnail and choose mask. Now it's given us a layer that's attached similar to the clipping mask, and it's already named it for us, layer mask. And on that mask, we can do a few things. By painting on this mask with either a black, white, or gray scale brush, we're gonna change what's visible through the mask. By default, the mask is pure white. If we choose to invert that, it's going to get rid of our entire image. This is called non-destructive editing. So we've managed to erase the entire heart face, but it's still there. You can see it below. So if we choose to paint with a white brush on top of this layer, we will reveal what's underneath the mask. We've essentially uncovered what's below the mask. If we're not exactly satisfied with the shape of this heart, we could choose a black color, pure black, to refine the shape of the heart.
it almost looks like I'm erasing the heart, right? But I haven't actually erased anything. I'm only using a mask. You can see how funny this looks of the things I've erased and, and shown by using black and white on the mask. And you can see that I haven't edited or damaged the original pixels here. At any time, I can turn off this mask and reveal what's underneath it. So by doing non-destructive editing, you're able to experiment with your work and you don't have to worry about pressing undo, 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 and accidentally making something happen that's irreversible. So whenever you can use masks, it's a good option. Something to note is that you can't use color inside masks. If I, if I come over here and just choose like a bright red and I come to my mask and I try to paint on it, it's not going to do anything. The only thing it's going to do is it's going to take the value of that red, which in this case is a hundred percent lightness. And it's going to just paint it as if it's white and it's going to keep revealing, um, the layer below it. So if you want to add color, you're going to need to use a clipping mask. Like before you can create a new layer, choose clipping mask. And then from there, you can add your color on top of that mask. I hope this explained masks and clipping masks well enough for you. Um, if I want to give another short example, what we can do is we can grab a dark color. We can draw a leaf, fill that in, and then we can create a new layer and choose clipping mask. And on this clipping mask layer, we're going to add in some more colors. Let's take a dark, darker color and kind of fill in this half. Nice. Let's create another clipping mask. And we'll add in some slightly darker and smaller lines for like little veins in this leaf. Right, that looks pretty nice. And from here, we can take this opacity and we can just add a little bit of this. We don't wanna have that super like, um, we don't want to have this opacity turned all the way up. We can just turn that down so it's nice and subtle. Okay. So now we've used a layer and clipping masks to add color that stay within the bounds of the pixels without being destructive. We can turn them off and we have our original shape. Now we can tap on this original leaf, choose mask, and choose a black color. Now I'm going to essentially carve out the shape of the leaf without damaging any of the original pixels. From here, I'm going to choose a brush with a pointy end. And I'm going to just carve out some little sections of this leaf. Now I probably went a little overboard with that. Let's undo and change this the brush size. And let's just add a couple in these empty spaces here. There, pretty cool, right? And if we wanted, we could come back to our original layer and use our round brush and add a stem. If we wanted to come back to our clipping mask layers, create a new clipping mask and change this color to something like brown. Now we can clipping mask over and create that little brown stem. Pretty cool. So this kind of shows you how you can combine masks and clipping masks to create something pretty rad. And the reason why we put all these clipping masks on different layers, you could, if you wanted, just paint all of the different things on one clipping mask. But let's say uh, we don't like our brown color. We can come over to our adjustments, which we'll dive in a little bit deeper later. And just change, you know, the brightness, the lightness of that stem without affecting the other colors. 
in another way, we can also select this clipping mask layer and maybe choose alpha lock. Remember what that does? Alpha lock is going to lock the pixels onto um, what's already existing here. So essentially, instead of painting over any of this, if we choose a slightly lighter color and we want to add a small little highlight on the edge of this stem, it's not going to paint over everything. It's only going to paint over that clipping mask and the pixels that we've already specified in the alpha lock. So you can see how you can keep building and building upon this and exploring masks, layers, clipping masks, and more just with a few simple tools. Last but not least, if we wanted to take the darker portion of this leaf here and choose alpha lock, we can use a texture brush. Let's come over to Timmy Textures and pick something that's noisy, maybe wet moon sand. Here we can take our leaf and we'll pick a little bit darker color and let's come along the edge and add some texture. See, it only locked into that section of the clipping mask. So that's how you can use clipping masks and layers to create some pretty cool stuff and help you to not damage your artwork. You can easily turn any of these off and you're left with your original shape. And just like anything else, you can duplicate these. If you wanted to, you can select everything here and press group. Now you have all of these in one group. You can rename this and call it leaf. From here, you could even duplicate that group. Use your transform tool and rotate it around. You can keep on doing this and arrange yourself a cute little pattern or whatever you want to do with it. Just know that the option is there and all of this stuff is really simple to use once you understand how it works. So thank you for watching. In the next one, we're going to talk about guides, grids, and symmetry. So I hope to see you in the next one.